Blanco. YouTube. It's your boy Nin. We back with another video, man. But we back with another video, man. Today we doing. Today we doing a reaction video, man. We doing why is Congo? If I'm saying if I'm saying it incorrectly, just let me know down in the comments, man. But why is Congo so poor despite having 24 trillion dollars worth of minerals? That is kind of fucked up because it's like how are you getting all the materials from there, but it's like you're not you're not giving nothing back to the like to the community that that's just coming from. That's fucked up, bro. Y'all niggas, y'all big companies is fucked up for that. No funny shit. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, man. But other than that, let's just hop right in the video. The Democratic Republic of the Congo, also known as Congo Kinshasa, and formerly as Zaire, is probably the poorest country in the world, and yet the wealthiest nation on the planet. Measured in terms of natural wealth, the DRC is arguably one of the richest countries in the world. The problem is extreme income disparity, where a tiny minority possess most of the wealth, while the rest of the population have ritual or nothing. To put it- Oh, so wait, it's over there, it's like, it's either you have a lot, or you have nothing type shit? How does that, how does that work type shit? In perspective, Congo has a nominal GDP per capita of just 500 US dollars. 71% of Congo's 85 million people live in absolute poverty with no access to drinking water, education, medical services, electricity, and in some cases, they lack food. The state of transportation in the Congo is probably the best indicator of the economic situation. In 1959, before independence, the country had 145,000 kilometers of quality roads, all built to support the agricultural system. In the year 2015, mm, no, there were only 4,000 kilometers of quality roads, mostly in Kinshasa, Rubumbashi, and around the ports in the west near Matadi. In 60 years, and I'm guessing, I'm guessing those are like the, like the, like the capital, like the downtown big areas. I'm guessing two new paved roads have been constructed in the country. This leaves many population centers isolated from one another. Reaching Kisangani requires either a plane or a boat and a few weeks to paddle up the Congo River. Yeah. That's sad, bro. No funny shit. That's why, that's why I'm blessed to have everything. I, I, that's so, why I'm blessed. I don't, I don't so complain, poor, bro. Despite no having $24 trillion worth of minerals. To find out, we'll have to go back 100 years. For one thing, it is important to understand that for half of the last 120 years of the Congo's history, the economy was managed entirely by foreigners or mm. a foreign country. King Leopold's rule really did nothing in terms of economic development for the Congo. In fact, it harmed the economy more than anything else. The population reduced drastically through forced labor. Traditional agriculture... So no funny shit, he was probably just there to get what he wanted to get. A hot bright light and dip, nigga. He probably didn't even care. He probably didn't even care about y'all, about you, um, about them. Did he really care? He probably didn't even care about them Congo people at the time. So he probably just went and got his shit. Vital food stuff declined as well, and the trading post in the eastern portion of the country that had been established by the Arabs were destroyed in open warfare with Leopold's free state. During World War II, things in the Congo picked up again due to the Allied powers' demand for copper, tin, rubber, and so on. The economy boomed and urbanization rapidly increased. The three largest cities in the country were Leopoldville, current Kinshasa, the colonial administration's capital, Stanleyville, current Kisangani, mm. in the northeast, and Elizabethville, current Rubumbashi, in the heavily mined province of Katanga. Katanga! Okay, in 1960, okay. the country became independent. The first government under Patrice Rumumba was liable for a debt worth 350 million British pounds, a debt incurred by the previous colonial government, by far the largest debt burden bestowed upon any former African colony. This was that the first insane. real sign of trouble for the new Congo. 
The new government assumed control over a portfolio of assets worth approximately 240 million pounds, including a significant amount of shares in the largest mm. mining company in the country. It probably didn't help that the country didn't have many qualified leaders. Estimates vary, but the Congo that nigga, only ten. That nigga is motherfucker. Who? This nigga right here is who? Oh my god! <laughs> Look at this nigga, man. I'm definitely. That's definitely. Mm, that's not. That's def. Oh now nah, this is Peter Lee right here. This is definitely Peter Lee. Mm. What y'all think, Macho? They have the nose and shit. I don't know. This is def. Ooh, nah. Seti's definitely this. <laughs> this is Ab. Right here. Uh, who's this right here? Who's this? Y'all let me know who the, who those two is, but them niggas all look like like all them niggas. Country look didn't like. have many qualified leaders. Estimates vary, but the Congo had only ten university graduates in the entire population, and of these, only two were ministers in the Lumumba government. The first real government attempt at stabilizing the economy in November 1961 failed. As much as 90% of the national budget was sold up by salaries, leaving retro in a way for development. Funds provided by the UN were often squandered or stolen. 90% is crazy. In 1965, General Joseph de Sire Mobutu staged a coup and seized control of the country government-owned mining company. At the it's time. crazy how, how past moves is affecting their economy now. Like that was years ago, and it's still affecting it now. That's fucking insane. But he lost ninety million. That's crazy. That's insane. Like, could not reinvest its earnings or purchase new equipment. Civil unrest in 1991 caused more damage to the mining operations. The government was forced to sell a significant number of mines in an attempt to salvage itself. This worked to an extent, but meant that much of the country's most valuable resources were in the hands of foreign companies. And none of the foreign companies were given back. Yeah, that's fucked up, man. Another civil war in 1997 led to the overthrow of Mobutu, though his replacement, Lolent Kabila, led a government that embezzled at about the same rate. Another war was fought from 1998 until 2003, Millions of people died. Railroads had been cut, and the economy was even worse off than it was before. From 1990 to 2001, the agricultural GDP of the country declined by 40% per person. Coffee, cocoa, palm oil, and cocoa exports went from 400 million American dollars worth in Damn. 1995. But I mean, like, you still have enough money to try to, you know, try to bring the economy a little bit up, but I guess, I guess the government system just... You know, to a dismal 4.3 million in 2003. Uh, By the year 2005, peasants were producing a mere 8 million tons of cassava, less than a, half of the buzzer. 20 million harvested in 1960. Use for other foodstuffs like corn and rice were also down. Farming today has been reduced to mostly subsistence agriculture in a migrating slash and burn pattern, which is both inefficient and unsustainable. One thing that is looking up for the Congo right now is the demand for cobalt. That blue rock is all the rage now due to its application for lithium ion batteries in the nascent electric car industry. In other words, it's the future crude oil. The country produces half of the world's supply. Unfortunately, much of that is extracted by foreign companies. And that is crazy. That is crazy. If I was, I, I mean, they probably have some contract or some shit. But that's crazy, bro. Because how, how does, how does, how is everything coming from from there? Fifty? How much they said it was? Forty to fifty percent is coming from there, and their economy's not chips. That's fucked up, bro. Boss, in an that's incredibly unsafe manner. Any attempt to raise royalties owed to the government by foreign mining companies has been met with threats of scaling down mining operations. These foreign businesses have long been finding ways to pay the least amount possible for their operations. Then there is of course the war in the east and the unrest in Kasai, which makes everything worse. Blood diamonds even fund a few of the militias. All that and more is why the Democratic Republic of Congo is still poor. So sad.
Damn. That's crazy, bro. How? That's crazy how, like, everything is. I, that's crazy, bro. I just hope. I just hope. Um, comment down below if it's actually like this, like right now, type shit. Cause this this video was in 2020. So I wanna know how if it improved in the last two years or so, you know? So let me know down below, but if you like it, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, man. You know, share with a friend until that friend and share with another friend, man. But we out, peace.